one, engines full power, and lift off. Go Falcon, go IMAP, go Swipo L1, and go Corruptors. And we are flying three new missions on a million mile journey to track space weather. looking flight so far our tracking cameras getting a great shot as this mission climbs into the sky we'll be looking now for those engines to throttle down as we go through max q the time of maximum dynamic pressure on the nine power and telemetry are nominal That's right, so coming up is max Q, which is the maximum aerodynamic pressure, largest structural load the vehicle will experience. So slowing it down helps to reduce some of the load it experiences. Is supersonic. And that will help us recover and reuse the first stage. Following max Q, we'll be able to throttle those en engines back up as atmospheric density drops. Plus two minutes into flight, you can see all nine Merlin engines. You can at least see the the exhaust from five of them there. Beautiful shot looking back to the earth. Got a couple quick call outs coming up. We're gonna shut off the engine at two minutes and twenty-nine seconds. Stage set at two thirty-two, and then our first burn begins at two forty. Here we go. Stage separation confirmed. And there it goes. On the left side of your screen, you can see the first stage booster falling away now. And on the right side, our second stage flying IMAP, Swift OL1, and Carruthers. This fir first burn is a key burn, Norman. Correct. This is where we're trying to make sure that we're getting our our, uh, our spacecraft here in their optimal orbit, just to start off with before we do our transfer into their to their higher orbit. Fairing separation confirmed. There go the fairings, and now you can see yep. all three spacecraft revealed. So now our three spacecraft. IMAP, Swift 001, and Carruthers are now exposed to the space environment. So one other note on these fairings, these are new fairings. The SpaceX, of course, is going to attempt to, attempt to retrieve, retrieve these fairings once they fall back to Earth on just read the instructions, that, that beautiful drilling ship that's sitting there in the Atlantic. And we saw the fairings falling away. I think you can st you still see. Well, that might be some debris, but uh, we, see, we got a good shot of them falling. And uh, in fact... Uh, as you mentioned, they'll be recovering those, and the booster will be landing on the drone ship. The reason for the drone ship in today's mission is because we need all that performance from the rocket, right? That's actually correct, yes. So despite the fact that we also were launching due east, right, and taking advantage of the Earth's rotation to give us a little bit more both energy. Both vehicles are following nominal trajectories. All right, so we heard that both vehicles flying nominal trajectories. That is actually excellent news there. But despite the fact that I said before, we're flying due east to take advantage of the Earth's rotation to give us a little bit more um, velocity here as we got into orbit so we can carry a little more payload into orbit, we did need all the performance of this, in, of this vehicle to actually get our payloads to where they needed to go to do all that great science. One more quick call out here on the left there. You see the first stage there. You see the grid fins that are actually deployed. Those are going to actually help guide the, the uh, first stage back to the drone ship when that, when that drone ship first starts its, um, its boost back burn. 
excuse me, what's the first stage? Starts to spook his yeah. backbone. Joel Ship's not burning anything. <laughs> you may have seen some but soot on, the right on that hand first side stage of your too. screen. We are burning that uh, second stage. Go ahead, Amanda. Yeah, just noticing here in the great views of that first stage, you may see some soot during the upcoming entry burn and prior to launch as well. So during the entry burn, that will be the second of three total burns. Falcon 9 will be decelerating by reigniting three of these Merlin engines on the first stage, and that will cause the vehicle to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases or the rocket's plume. And that's what deposits the layer of soot on the vehicle's surface. It comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses, and it builds up a little bit more on the outside of the vehicle, which really gives the Falcon first stage fleet the distinctive reused look. We're looking out for that entry burn coming up shortly. The recovery and reuse of the first stage is what allows us to refly the most expensive parts of the launch vehicle, and that drives down the cost of going to space. When costs are lower, both government and commercial customers can launch more missions, especially in the form of rideshares like today's, and that helps to acceler accelerate research and development. looking for that entry burn in just under 20 seconds from now. You'll be able to follow along with the uh, Merlin engines relighting on the first stage with the telemetry on the bottom of your screen. Stage one, entry burn startup. Stage one, FPS is saved. And there we heard it. That's the first call. That's the, her that's the call for the first st stage entry burn startup. We'll be looking for entry shutdown here in a few seconds and finally get landing burn shortly thereafter. So stay tuned. This is the second flight of this booster, Stage and if all goes well, they'll bring it back down and fly it again. Stage two is in terminal guidance. Just 30 more seconds on that stage two burn. And then we'll cut it off and coast for quite a while. Quite a while until we get to the right point in space to fire it again to put us in our final our final destination. Yeah, just about 50 minutes or so. Stage two, FTS is saved. All right, so we'll be looking for that cutoff on the right-hand side of your screen. Stage one, transonic. I'm back shut down. And we heard it, in back, in back shut down. Cool views on the left with that booster coming back. Nominal park orbit. Shoot through those clouds. That's right, and we're rapidly approaching the landing it's burn. got some trailing there. Uh, this landing burn scheduled to start Stage in just a few seconds. Burn. There it is, starting up. This will last about 25 seconds, and this will reduce the remaining speed of the vehicle for a soft touchdown on the drone ship, just to read the instructions. The booster is also equipped with four landing legs that will deploy for a vertical touchdown, so keep an eye out for that just prior to landing. Landing leg deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. Beautiful touchdown there of the first stage, and that marks the second landing for this booster. I must say, that that never gets old. <laughs> no doubt. And now, the stack. All right, you can see it's not quite illuminated uh, incredibly well, but uh, up there is IMAP, Carruthers, and SWIFO L1. We will continue to monitor the progress during coast phase. But for now, let's send it back to the host desk 